Again, I'd like to welcome everybody. My name is Jake, and the topic we're going to talk about today is Road to Inner Peace. And um, I looked up uh, so just some quotes and different information about inner peace and found this one that just said, Inner peace refers to a state of being mentally and spiritually at peace with enough knowledge and understanding to keep oneself strong in the face of stress. Which pretty much pinpoints what inner peace is. And last week, Eileen uh, was leading meditation, and she made reference to this quote by Paramahansa Yogananda. I will be calmly active, actively calm. I am a being of peace, sitting on the throne of poise, directing the kingdom of my activity. When I first saw this topic and I realized it was my week, um, the first thing that kind of came to me was, I think that should be the path to inner peace and not the road. Road makes it seems like it's really easy. (laughs) Um, It's not easy to find inner peace for most people. Um, and when we, th- when we think about why we're here and what is the divine's purpose for creating all of this and us, and it's, it's probably one of the greatest screenplays ever written <laughs> because there's, uh, first of all, there's duality. So you've got uh, joy and sadness and um, uh, and, and all these different different things that are opposite each other that make it an interesting existence here. And it's really the divine spirit's purpose in creating us who in our inner being, which is just each of us is a small facet of the greater spirit of the divine. And we're all unique in our individual properties and Um, abilities, and it's pretty incredible when you think about it. And even like identical twins, there will be a slight difference because the inner being is a different facet of the other inner being. And the whole purpose was to instill this in these bodies, in this inner being in these bodies, and that we would have this innate consciousness and desire to make a journey back to our father and mother, to make that evolution, that spiritual evolution, realizing that everything that we see through these senses and experience with our minds and bodies is all part of this drama that the Divine Spirit has created. And so in the screenplay, and hopefully everything has, everybody has a happy ending. And that was the purpose of putting this whole creation into existence, was to see this journey that sometimes takes lifetimes and lifetimes to create that desire in somebody to walk a path, to find a path that resonates with them and want to spiritually evolve, become more conscious of the divine. So I always like to visualize if this earth in this third dimension was a huge mountain and at the top of the mountain was the divine spirit. And as we gaze down on it, there's all these paths and trails that make their way up this mountain. And so there's a lot of opportunities for all souls to find what resonates with them and follow that path. <clears throat> and make that journey. So what makes it really difficult to find inner peace in this life? And there's the really basic struggle of food, shelter, and clothing that we all have our faced in our lives. And then as we gaze around the greater earth, there's always frequent wars going on. There's always intense suffering happening somewhere on the earth that affects us. 
there's racial and, and economic discrimination going on all the time. And then the thing that Yukteswar warned us about going into this yuga that we're entering into is the evolution of techno technological things. And we're seeing it in our lives here. And unfortunately, these things can be a distraction from finding inner peace. Like a TV, for example. Like when I was a kid, <laughs> we had this big box sitting in the living room with this little screen, and we had three channels, and we had to get up and turn the volume or turn the channel. <laughs> and we had an antenna on the roof. There was no cable or internet or anything. So we've seen how that's evolved. There's so many times, years ago, we'd be sitting in a theater and we hear this beep, 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 you know, somebody's pagers going off. That was the thing then. Everybody had pagers. And it was always annoying because, you know, why can't you silence your pager kind of thing. And that evolved into cell phones. And the internet started happening and all of a sudden cell phones became smartphones you know, little computers. And I'll never forget this. I think he was a senator from Alaska who was addressing Congress one day and talking about how the Internet was a series of tubes <laughs> if the information flowed through. I was like, well, I don't know about that, but it's a, it can be a distraction. You know, you could literally sit in front of your TV 24-7 and never see the same show. I mean, you could watch... There's so many things going on, just that one device. And then you have your phone where you've got your social media and, and uh, the ability to go on the Internet and, and make orders and, and talk to your friends and chat. And it's, it's just fantastic, incredible stuff. But you have to find a balance because it's really important that we find inner peace in this life. And I found a story that Yogananda made reference to. He said, nervousness is the disease of the civilization. I remember when some of us were driving up Pikes Peak in Colorado. Other cars were speeding past us on the steep, windy grade. I thought they were hurrying to get to the mountain type top in time to see the sunrise. To my great amazement, when we arrived, we were the only ones outside enjoying the view. All the others were in the restaurant drinking coffee and eating donuts. <laughs> Imagine, they rushed to the top and then rushed back just for the thrill of being able to say when they got home that they had been there and had coffee and donuts on Pike's Peak. That is what nervousness does. So what are some of the things we can do to find inner peace? Obviously one of them is take a break from our computers and our social media gazing. There's um, people that talk about how you can set a timer and, and that you're going to be on your device for X amount of time and then the alarm goes off and you walk away and, and you, take, you know, get away from it. You need to stay informed on world events what's going on around us and on the planet. And pray and project positive thoughts for the end of all suffering and discrimination around the world. And be kind to the world that's around us and, and to ourselves. And realize that as we are evolving, so is the whole planet. And there's going to be things that stress us out like wars or, you know, somebody getting shot or whatever. And we have to keep thinking about the big picture, that this planet is evolving and it's going to keep getting closer and closer to a spiritual place. Yogananda said, never be afraid of anything. Fear is the form of nervousness. As long as you are not dead, you are alive. <clears throat> so why should you fear? And once you're dead, it's all over, and you can't remember. So why worry? <clears throat> We're so blessed that he was such a prolific writer. I mean, there's just...
just amazing volume after volume of information that you wrote. Another opportunity to find inner peace is to take a walk in nature, which I confess I don't do enough, and I'm sure a lot of us are in that same boat. But the last time I took a hike, um, my wife Missy tuned me into the fact that you can get an app on your phone that, uh, and you dial in what trail, where you are and what trails are available. And so we did that and found this trail that, that was uh, uh, pretty good, not too hard. And it actually tracks you when you're on the trail, which is pretty cool. It shows you where you're going and so you don't make a wrong turn. Way different than the old days. <laughs> Another thing you can do is just, if you're near the ocean, you go to the beach. And just the rhythm of those waves and, and the sand, and, and it's just a wonderful opportunity to just shed those stressful situations and, and information that's racing through you. Years ago, when I first came to Sunburst, <clears throat> one thing about Santa Barbara that's very unique is that the sun rises and sets over the ocean. Not, doesn't happen very often around the planet. And Norm and, and a bunch of guys uh, were doing sun running. And I said, well, what's sun running? And so it's when, you, when the sun is low in the sky. So it's either when it's first rising or when it's setting. And you're on a beach, and you can gaze at the sun as you run. And you bring that energy of the sun into your body, and you circulate it down into the sand and back out again as you run, and it, these are, this is how, when you hear stories about how some Native Americans, and there's still some um, indigenous people in South America that run for 50, 100 miles. And they just keep running, and it's because they're doing this. They're recycling this energy that's emanating from the sun. And so you could sun run on the beach. You could practice that. Another wonderful thing in nature is a forest. If you have the opportunity to just walk in the forest, it is so, so incredible. Um, we took a trip uh, a few years ago to the sequoias, and just walking among those giant trees was just, um, oh, it was just amazing. It was really an amazing experience. Thich Nhat Hanh said, the mind can go in a thousand directions, but on this beautiful path, I walk in peace. With each step, the wind blows. With each step, a flower blooms. That would be a great quote to, to have going on in your mind as you walk through the forest. <clears throat> Another thing we can do is laugh as much as we can. And years ago, there was this thing called laughing yoga. I guess I didn't ever go to a class, but... <clears throat> but I wanted to tell a story about um, something that happened with my good brother Jonathan and I. <clears throat> Back in the 70s, we had a lot going on in Santa Barbara. We had five stores, and we had a juice factory and a bakery, and we had a wholesale warehouse where we would gather uh, organic produce from around the area and we'd take it down to LA three nights a week and load up air freight containers and ship them to natural food stores because they weren't, California was the only place you could get organic produce in the country at that time. And after a couple years of doing that, we had the opportunity to open up a warehouse in Los Angeles to specifically have be our produce warehouse. And Jonathan and I got the assignment to go down there and manage it. And you have to understand that, first of all, the produce market at that time, I think it's moved, but the produce market at that time was right downtown LA. And it was an intense environment down there. Not a happy place. A lot of homeless and a lot of crime. And the produce market was open from like midnight to eight in the morning. And so the warehouse had to, had to open up at 11 o'clock at night and stay open till all the trucks came back from deliveries at, you know, like four in the afternoon. So Jonathan and I realized, you know, being new managers of this warehouse, we had to be there when the warehouse opened. 
So we had to totally switch our schedules and go in at 11 o'clock at night and stay there till like 11 in the morning. And it's, I don't know if any of you have ever worked a graveyard shift, but it's really uh, not a happy, happy time. Your body is not used to not seeing the sun and you're not sure when to sleep, you're not sure when to eat. And I remember talking to a seasoned um, produce buyer down there who had been doing it for 30 years, and he said, you never get used to it. You never, your body never adapts to it. And so Jonathan and I, we, we really struggled. We didn't know when to sleep, when to eat, <laughs> or anything. And uh, we actually ended up gaining a few pounds uh, that first, I think, eight months we were going in at that time. And then we switched our schedule as things got more solid with, with the team and everything, and we started going in, like, um, I think we used to leave like around 7 in the morning, get in there. And we decided that we would start trying to lose a little bit of weight. And at that time, there was these things that still exist called protein powders. But at that time, the protein powders weren't as cool as they are now. They were kind of like mixing cement. You know, I mean, you really had to put a lot of water and some fruit in there to get it down your, your uh, throat. And so you had to have a blender. And um, so this one morning, you were always kind of rushing to get out of there because you never know what kind of rush hour you're going to hit in L.A. And we wanted to make sure we got there on time. And so I made my protein drink, and then Jonathan stepped up and put the ingredients in the blender. And a lot of times you had to get in there and kind of move things around to get things blending. And so I had, Jonathan had his back to me. He was at the counter, and I was drinking my drink. And uh, the blender's on, and I see him starting to stir, and then all of a sudden his spoon goes down into the blade, and it erupts all over the cabinets, all over him, it just down on the floor. And God, we laughed. We laughed so hard. And uh, we had... Lots of laughter, because it relieved the stress of that job. It was, it was not an easy job. And thankfully, Jonathan had a, still has a wonderful sense of humor. And we, sometimes till our sides ached, we used to laugh about different situations that we were in. So laughter is a great stress reliever. Yogananda said, you can come on earth to entertain and to be entertained. This is why life should be a combination of both meditation and activity. If you lose your inner balance, and that is just the time when you are vulnerable to worldly suffering, awaken the innate fortitude of the mind by affirming, no matter what experiences come, they cannot touch me. I am always happy. Another great opportunity is breath work. And Sunburst has some wonderful breath work classes that we teach on retreat weekends and, and other times during the year. And when it's practiced, it really brings inner peace. And because the breath can help, when you control your breath, your mind starts to slow and you begin to start feeling more peaceful and less stressed. And the, probably, the, I think, one of the best opportunities, because you can do it anywhere, anytime, is to meditate, to relieve stress. And in that process of meditation, we find that inner silence, in that, that state of where our mind starts to slow. And there's many techniques of meditation out there, and it's really important to find one that resonates with you, that you can follow. Imagine all those paths on the mountain and find the one path that's going to help you get to the top. Yogananda used to say that Kriya Yoga was the superhighway to the infinite. And as all of us in Sunburst can attest, Kriya Yoga is a very powerful tool for meditation and brings wonderful opportunities to find inner peace and awareness of the divine. 
And I actually read recently where they've been doing these, because of the technological advances, they have these instruments now that can measure the brain in ways they could never measure before. And they got together with some um, uh, meditators and some nuns and some priests and ministers, and they monitored their brains. And they found that the people that meditated, the frontal lobe of the brain would activate. And Norm always used to talk about that, the founder of Sunburst, how when we meditate, the front, frontal lobe begins to get stimulated. And it's the part of the brain that doesn't get used very much. And when we sit down and start a practice of meditation, sometimes it's difficult to get in a groove and get in that place where we can get, find that inner peace. And I, I remembered when I used to run years ago, I used to <clears throat> have an opportunity where I could run every morning. And I worked myself up so I was running about six to eight miles a day. <clears throat> and every time I tried it, the first mile was hard. It was really hard. But after a while, you start to get into a rhythm. <clears throat> and all of a sudden, you, you can use your breath and you can imagine your breath just cir circulating to the earth and coming back into you again. And if you have the opportunity to stare, stare at the sun while you're running, <clears throat> this rhythm starts. And that's what happens when you practice meditation. You first sit down and you're trying to get comfortable and your mind's racing and you're thinking, why am I doing this? I need to do this, this, and this. And if you hang in there, that first mile, your body starts getting into a rhythm and your mind starts slowing down and you begin to experience that inner peace and that awareness. So as we go into our meditative portion of the service today, I want to help us find that centered spot, which is the third eye which is down from the temple, in from the bridge of the nose, and in from the, I'm sorry, down from the crown, in from the temple, and in from the bridge of the nose. And that's where we have to focus our eyes, out, out here, and a point out here about eight or ten inches as we meditate. Because that helps keep our thoughts from wandering, keeps our eyes from wandering. And it's important to find a good seat where you're comfortable and your body can relax everything and you're just existing on your bones, basically, on your skeleton. And follow your breath. And there's specific techniques and different meditation practices for your breathing. But it's very important to have a rhythm of your breathing where you're counting or you're chanting or, or, or whatever to get that breath into a rhythm. So April's going to play some bowls and lead us into our silent period right now.
Sometimes we feel kind of helpless, <clears throat> helpless in how what we can, each of us can do to help change the world, how to make it a better place, and how to raise the consciousness of the planet. And Yogananda said, change yourself, and you have done your part in changing the world. Every individual must change his, her own life if one wants to live in a peaceful world. The world cannot become peaceful unless and until you yourself begin to work towards peace. Please follow me in prayer. Almighty Spirit, Spirit. we, your children, gather together today today. and give thanks thanks unto Thee for this gift of life and for this wonderful opportunity to live in Mother Nature and to feel you pulsating within us and around us in everything. Guide us that we might find inner peace every day day. and that our spirits spirits become more aware aware of our opportunities opportunities to change ourselves ourselves. and the planet. Amen. Amen.
Feel my 